Hey, good morning, guys. It's Monday morning, and uh, we had a big storm, or actually a series of storms kind of blow through the area last night. Let me get the lights on over here. You can see we got quite a bit of water in the shop this morning. Uh, in fact, the most I've ever had in here. So, um, you can see it was all the way back to here. Um, and uh, what causes this to come in like this is that the um, I was just checking it out um, is the amount of rain that comes down in a short period of time when it just really really rains hard all that water coming off the roof again hits the uh, hits the landing of the roll-up door you can see it's not really I mean it's wet but it's been a lot worse out here at times anyway the water comes off hits on this landing right here because uh, the gutters just can't process it all for a couple of reasons one is they're mostly full of crap uh, leaves and junk and whatever I need to get up there and clean them off but um, I mean you can see there's no standing water out here and this is not you know I mean, it's not muddy or anything. It's just, um, so you see we got a little bit of water there, standing there. Um, and then this is a couple of areas that the guy worked on. And, um, you know, it's it's better. It is starting to flow a little bit. I'm, I'm guessing it was flowing pretty good. And one of the things that I was supposed to do, <laughs> I, never, I never did it, was he sort of pushed a trench down through here, and you can see it lower than the you know than the barn and lower than the, the driveway so it's just kind of got a natural flow uh, I was supposed to go dig underneath that fence there he, he did it all with a bobcat and got it to the edge and uh, there's a drainage ditch out there at that little dirt road and I never got out there and did it so we definitely need to do that and he kind of did the same thing over here too see a low area right there that has always been low and so he did he did kind of the same thing here too you can see he uh, pushed an area and you can see it he actually even pushed a tree down right there uh, that was standing in this little opening and um, with the thought again that this would all run off out to the ditch at the road and but it looks like it's it's still lower here and it comes up still too high right here for it to, to run on off like he wanted it to so um, anyway I'm gonna get him back out here and see if he can work on this this edge right here some more um, the stuff coming into the, the shop is really my, my issue to deal with, uh, not, not really his, um, I don't think. I mean, I did pay him to put the, the French drain in, but the best I can tell, that's working because all the, you know, the low, wet stuff that was kind of hovering and all around the, the edge of the shop is running off. It's not staying so muddy, you know, at the edge of the shop. Did a lot of wind and stuff. Looks like the barn survived that. It's just hanging in there. So, anyway, I do see a little bit of water back here at the uh, where the French drain is, um, which I guess is an indication that it is getting all the water. Uh, taking it from the roof and and getting it back here so that it doesn't congregate around and uh, we're kind of making our way back here to the scene of the big uh you know shoot out at the okay corral with the cats yesterday so right there's where the french drain is and you can see the water sitting up on top of it so um i guess it's kind of doing its job and uh, that should drain on out of there pretty quickly and I don't really see you know any water or anything back there 
Um, I see a little bit right at the edge of my my um, pad there. So anyway, needless to say, this this property needs a lot of maintenance, a lot of work. All these trees. I had this tree <clears throat> limb that was right there, and it it broke off um, some time ago. And it's just kind of leaning over and you see that one's broke off there. So, you know, and I had him push that tree down. So I got to get a chainsaw out here and cut all this stuff up. I mean, about half of these trees need to be taken down because they're just in such poor shape. This one's half dead right here. This side of the, the tree is completely dead. In fact, there's termites in the bottom on the left side right there. The termites had gotten into it and it's... It's going to go at some point. I, I think, you know, it's not really in danger of hurting anything. I don't, I don't know if it went that way. It might reach the barn, but probably not. And so I'm not really that worried about it. Um, these ones in here could definitely reach out and hit my truck or the shop. So I really should come and just take all those down right there. I mean, they don't really serve any purpose. Or at least, yeah, I mean, they... I mean, you see that one right there is just leaning way over. So, and then these, that one right there probably is, you know, could do some damage on the shop. In fact, probably all these along this fence line down here, through here could. It's a really tall one right there. So, uh, all right, well, I'm going to get the day started and go out here and get the squeegee and push this water out and shop back the rest of it out. And, uh call this guy see if he can swing by and take a look all right thanks all right it's Monday afternoon I got a couple of things shipped out to customers I still have not uh, shipped out the uh, I still got to fish out the um, brackets for four fields furniture and um, yeah you're gonna have to excuse this mess I've started keeping all every box I get and all the packaging that comes with it so I can reuse it to pack stuff to ship it. So you're going to probably, unfortunately, see crap piled over here in the corner. I really hate that. I normally just get rid of it immediately just to get the clutter out. But I'm always now needing something to, to put something in something. And it's just a lot easier to re and cheaper to recycle and reuse than to buy new stuff, you know. So anyway, I got... Um, this kit here for 1970 Chevelle 396 he's actually got a lathe and um, so I'm including a bushing in his which is which can go down in that he can bore out the center of that and then this will go down in the bushing he'll have to chuck this up and turn it a little bit which is kind of part of the instructions and then that will go in there it'll almost fit like it is so and those three will all fit together so um thanks ken for ordering that i'll get i have everything ready for your kit to ship except for that one pivot arm the three quarter inch piece i just i haven't put any three quarter inch plate up there lately so i need to get uh when i get this eighth inch stuff off i'll throw some three quarter on there and get that cut but i did take a minute and mock this up even though it is a mismatch this is not going to go together like this i'm about to cut some more of these uh bracket plates down here um, with a different configuration that will be welded together um, instead of drilled and tapped here where those blocks are it'll just be a little thinner plate and it'll get welded there of course it's still going to have these big bolts bolting it together but um, we'll kind of get a look at what's happening with it um, and then I'm going to make a thin a thinner beam this beam right here is way too big you know I just took a guess at making those brackets um, from a picture and I just I just didn't get the scale right on them so in order to get the table to set up high enough I had to use two by twelves which you know to, to get that to get that lower bracket or the upper bracket up and what that does is just it creates too much girth and just that beam down there is just way too big in terms of in relation to the scale of the top so I'm making a four inch top thick that will be ebony black like that down there. And then the brackets and the wood, everything is gonna get gloss 
uh, clear on top of it. So it'll be it'll be a big bulky showing for sure. And then I'll have a thinner setup, like I was just mentioning, uh, for the cedar top and a thinner, smaller cedar beam. And then I'm gonna hot roll or get the middle scale off of the uh, off of those. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on here today. This is kind of my first look at mocking this up just to kind of get an idea of what these will look like. And uh, maybe I'll be able to sell these tables locally to somebody, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But what I really wanna do is just sell the bracket kits and the weld together and the bolt together. Uh, the bolt together obviously is gonna be quite a bit more expensive because of all the drilling and tapping and all that. The weld together, you know, there isn't any reason why I couldn't sell the weld together for maybe I'm gonna say like $249, $249 shipped. And then you spend a hundred bucks and on some decent, you know, cedar or whatever, you know, pine or cedar, some softwood and make yourself a nice top, you know, and for, let's say $400 or less, you have a really custom cool table, um, you know, that you can't go to down to the store and buy. Ikea or places like that. Anyway, that's about it. Um, I'll keep working away here. I'm about to make the cedar beam. Uh, probably get that started on that tonight. And then uh, cut those brackets out. I got to do the CAD work on that to change it, get rid of the holes where, the, where those drill and tap and have holes through them. I'm just going to eliminate all those holes. And I'm going to make the opening for the beam a lot uh, shorter so that a smaller beam can go through it and still keep the height the same. Let's take a look at this height here. Of course, I've never have a tape measure where I need it. Um, I, I wanted to get the height that um, 30 inches is what, you know, the standard height for a, a dining table is. And um, so just based on some calculations, it looked like this one was gonna come out to be somewhere around 29 inches. So we're, we're at 28 and a half there. Um, so I've got some feet that I'm gonna put underneath this right here. They're gonna be three eighths inch thick round with a bolt that comes up through them. And that'll give me at least another inch there. So uh, it's a 28 and a half. It'll be 29 and a half on, on this particular one when I get done with it. And if I don't like it, I can, I can put some spacer blocks underneath the top there where it mounts, you know, and space it up a little, get it up a little bit higher. So, um, yep. All right, guys, I'm gonna get this, uh, get this uploaded. Hope everybody had a good Monday and we will see you soon.